Hey, what's going on guys, Arva here, and welcome back to a brand new video today. We're back with the tech roundups for the Real Life Grand Prix. We had a bit of a break. We missed the last one for the Chinese Grand Prix, as I just did not have enough time to do that. But we were back here for the Azerbaijan Grand Prix, and a lot of specific updates. As a whole, uh, for Azerbaijan, you'll see a lot of the teams probably just trying a few little tweaks to their to their winglets in general, on the front wing and the rear wing. Azerbaijan, a very unique circuit. It's been kind of called by, by, by a lot of the teams. Uh, you know, we've known, known that from the previous two seasons, but... Uh, this year, I think they're making more of a kind of, uh, you know, emphasis on it because Azerbaijan's come up a little bit earlier in the calendar than it did last time out. And also, with the last three circuits, we've had a bit of everything, really. And Azerbaijan brings that to a fourth different sort of circuit. But this one is a very unique one with such long straights, all pretty much 90 degree corners almost. Uh, it's a very unique challenge for the teams. And then they have to try and cut drag. And so uh, we used to, well, we, we were used to seeing winglets of this nature that you can see on screen right now with the Ferrari car being debuted for the first time only at a place like Spa, the Belgium Grand Prix, where obviously at Spa, um, you know, you need the high speed downforce, but also you need to be able to cut drag for the long camel straight. You got the back straight with the kinks down towards the bust up chicane. Uh, and that was generally where the first time the entire season we saw these kind of U-shaped um, uh, curved rear wings. But now they're coming in very, very early on, round number four for the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. Ferrari and Mercedes trying to tweak their rear wings to try and cut drag for Ferrari with a more kind of obvious swooping nature as we move from the right hand side of the actual end plate itself towards the inside of the main plane. You can see that swoop down nature. You've got the normal mini T-wing attached to the, the front of it onto the double edge. The two hand connections coming out the actual main housing of the exhaust. And you'll see one little streak here on the end plate. If we I mentioned Renault briefly, they're trying to cut the drag. So this is a very zoomed in picture of the end plate of the Renault car. So just like we've seen with the McLaren, obviously the McLaren has a very aggressive style of doing their rear wing end plate, but Renault kind of copied that style with uh, four little gills essentially and, and slot gaps to allow air to pass through that rear wing. This is the actual front leading edge, so that one slot streaking down, that's kind of nothing new. We've seen that on a lot of teams really when they want to try and bleed air through the end plate rather than let it just kind of hit the surface and go along the entire thing, but now they've had these four little streaks, probably uh, an Azerbaijan specific one. I wouldn't expect them to keep this for the Spanish Grand Prix unless they really do think they need to cut uh, drag as a hole over the, the entire car, but they didn't do it at China, which obviously has a long back straight as well, so I really think this is a specific Azerbaijan thing. Speaking of cut and drag, McLaren have come out and said they know they need to fix their drag issues, and they're hoping to do that at the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. Nothing hugely striking about the McLaren car when we go to it. Right now, looking at a zoomed-in picture of that intricate end plate uh, side pod area, which I touched on. I didn't really touch on uh, completely in the last tech round that we did, which was all the way at the Bahrain Grand Prix. And I don't think I've actually even talked about it in a video yet, because obviously then I, I missed China. So if you if you haven't seen, obviously you hopefully would have seen it on track, but you don't exactly know what they're going for here. Obviously, trying to mimic a little bit on what Ferrari, Mercedes, Red Bull have done. You can see they're not quite got to that level of complexity, but it's a case of maybe they're waiting for that new, if you've missed that video, by the way, uh, there'll be an annotation in the top right there. Maybe waiting for that B spec car we've heard a lot about for the Spanish Grand Prix. We've heard a lot of talk that uh, from Eric Boulet this was not the car they actually wanted, and there should be a huge difference in Spain. Maybe they're waiting for that to really start working on this area and really add the kind of you see in the uh, the Mercedes and the in the Red Bull the triple element kind of uh, you know snowplow kind of big sledge wall on the side this side pod area. Maybe they're hoping for that, or they're also they also are conscious of the fact that they don't want to add too much drag onto their car and with these aerodynamics devices all very good adding downforce like that that also does add drag anyway as a whole so and McLaren clearly know that's an issue for them so maybe that's why they haven't bothered to develop it at, at the Azerbaijan Grand Prix or it's just a case of like I said they're waiting for it but uh, if you didn't if you didn't see that in closer detail I obviously didn't mention it in the video as I said because we missed China just here it is but you know if we look towards the rear in the car you can see that detail I was talking about McLaren taking that uh, drag reduction on, on the end plates from the extreme They've had that now for a, uh, an entire year or so since they launched the, the 2017 car. But um, McLaren clearly not um, doing anything major to actually reduce drag. I think it's a case of they're you know, looking at tiny things again with Mercedes to maybe tweak to try and help them a little bit. Maybe the front wing angle as well will come into that as well. But in terms of when you look at it, nothing is popping out, at least to me. And I haven't seen any news outlets kind of point anything out that's majorly, majorly different on the McLaren car as a whole. Also, just nice little detail. You can see the little still 
well. The winglet they've kept on from this edge to kind of control the plume of the exhaust coming out the engine as well and any kind of airflow that's coming off the top of the side pod as well. And then if we look a little further down, you can see the nice floor detailing, the slot gaps trying to get air in towards this kind of area where they can create a vacuum seal between the rear wing end plate and the tyre. But a big race for McLaren in terms of proving that they're maybe trying to reduce the drag. But um, I paid uh, Fernando Alonso my F1 fantasy video, if you've seen that, as uh, you know, coming out with a, a bit of a miracle result, hopefully, and I uh, hope he can do it. It's one of those places where, obviously, it's, if it's like anything like the 2017 Grand Prix, it's possible. We'll see. Coming on to bigger updates, really, we look to Sauber Alfa Romeo, and you can see this uh, very uh, finely uh, cut out slot on their front wing. So it used to be almost like a like the Sauber of 2012. It was kind of just pushed in a little bit. If you remember the launch, um, it was uh, the, the, the front wing had a bit of a, how do you say it, like a cliff face almost to it, a little bit of a bulge uh, inwards on the front wing. But now they've actually got a full cutout, and that is for an S duct. So we saw before um, Sauber had a huge, huge duct under underneath their entire nose that spanned the entire width of the actual uh, front bit of the, of the nose cone here. And now they've cut out a really big chiseled uh, uh, hole for the air to pass over. So obviously, if you're unfamiliar with the S duct, taking air from the bottom of the car, feeding it in an S shaped duct. That's what it's called, the S duct up to the top. That'll inject air to the top of the chassis and that injection of air is going to encourage mixing of the air at the very top. And that's going to allow the air to try and stick a little bit more to the chassis. And they need that even more so in 2018 with the halo also being a bit of a bluff object right there as well as the driver helmet that was there before, obviously, is, is a bit of a task. But Sauber now going with a much more chiseled, actual prominent exit to that S-duct. Looking at Haas now from China to Baku, they've gone with a bit of a trimmed front wing. So again, trying to re reduce that drag. You can clearly see that still nice patterning of that tunnel, uh, kind of a, a section of the front wing to try and channel the air to the outside of the tyre. But then simply cutting a little bit of the flap, you can see the, the, the clear difference also on the actual outer edge here, the way the front wing is actually curling a bit differently. And so trying to reduce the drag they've got on that front wing while still trying to manipulate their air the best they can. And it looks like from these little flicks now, you can see the difference, little tiny, you know, this most subtle of flicks on the very end. Trying that'll be to flick air right towards the underside where you've got those winglets right underneath the actual nose cone section and uh, where the Mercedes guys, for example, have the snowplow, has to have maybe more of just the, the winglets that McLaren kind of have, where it's just kind of dangling across something that we've had in F1 for a while now instead of uh, an actual snowplow there. Red Bull, no strangers to trimming their rear wing. They've done it so many times before and famously, as I, as I mentioned before, Spa has been the big place where I remember back to 2013 distinctly. That was uh, when we saw Sebastian Vettel uh, come out and, you know, indeed also Mark Webber, but both Red Bulls back in 2013 rocked up with the skinniest rear wings you'd ever seen uh, to that point. And again, Red Bull not shy. They've done it many times before last season as well, but here straight away now it's come a little bit early in the season that we we're expected to uh, round number four uh, for, for Baku for those straights. You know, Verstappen, I think it was already in interviews uh, before he even got to Baku was saying he was worried about the straight line speed so Red Bull trying to do all they can to rectify that and try and combat the maybe lack of speed they have in the Renault power unit in the back of their car and also in general obviously the Red Bull car is more for the corners you would you would imagine kind of agree I think um, so trying to negate that and you know I think if they try an aggressive strategy this uh, this race again you know like we saw with China they could catch the, the Ferrari Mercedes out obviously they're going to have to hope for things to go in their favour and I don't expect maybe it's a to, you know, unless something crazy happens again or there's a safety car, they may not be able to do that. But you can see the difference in the angle, both on the top and the upper flap, just a lot shallower um, in, in comparison to China. Going back to Renault, slightly different front wing uh, configuration for them. Instead of these three uh, flaps, you can't really see it from this angle, but instead of these three flaps, uh, very aggressively swooping upwards and also arching a little bit further back to try and control the airflow. Like the Haas, basically, they try to trim it down a little bit, bring everything a little bit more forward, and so trying to cut drag wherever they can while still maintaining the intricacy and the detail, clearly, in terms of trying to chuck air to the side of the tyres. Funny, like, Ma uh, like Monaco. Monaco, they bring so many things that are very unique to Monaco in terms of trying to bring all the downforce they can. Baku, they're bringing specific things to try and cut drag where they can. And finally, just taking a closer look at the Williams car, you can see again, uh, if I just move my mouse cursor, that kind of bulging nature like we saw with the Ferrari, so the U-shaped rear wing. Interestingly enough, actually just looking at this uh, photo really for, for the first time in pure detail, the, the Williams guys have gone for a really big bucket seat rear wing, actually. Uh, the, the the bottom main plane is actually huge in comparison to the, to the front one there. So Williams going for a bit of a different um, style in terms of also, it looks like they've 
trimmed this uh, area of the M plate a lot uh, closer than uh, Ferrari and Mercedes ever have. And then you've got a few little streaks here trying to pinpoint the air outwards, swooping up to try and get that upwash. But Miss uh, Williams, on noting on Williams, I think I don't know if you guys have seen it on the on the art on the articles today, but Williams coming out and saying that uh, this year they've definitely lost that straight edge, straight line speed uh, edge they had last last year. That was obviously a characteristic we've seen for a lot of years now. Williams, like it was never a great car. It was just really good in the straight line, actually, as a whole, no matter what circuit it was. But it looks like this year they're saying they kind of lost that, and not surprising because they're very slow. I mean, so far, the last two Grand Prix, I believe, if uh, if I'm correct, because Tom's been the one that's pointed out every single time on the podcast, but Williams have gone slower than they went last year. Obviously, a lot of that is due to the chassis, but I think partly it's due to that, you know, acceptance of, yeah, they've somehow, for some reason, maybe they've been too uh, over-ambitious with the, the amount of error they've tried in that end plate area that obviously we, we talked about. They kind of copied the Ferrari style kind of side pod inlets and the entire area of that car. Maybe they went a bit too overboard, and now they've kind of lost that magic sparkle they had last season in terms of, yeah, the car wasn't maybe great in the corners, but at least they could make time up on the straights every single time. Here, we'll see. The place, obviously, where Stroll got third. Um, I highly doubt they'll be anywhere near that, but we'll see. We'll see. And also, finally, before we end off, then it's going to be the last little bit. Force India, we talked about on the podcast, but Force India did mention they didn't really, uh, they couldn't really get their new front wing to work as they wanted to in Bahrain. They were hoping for, uh, to make it work in China a lot better. Seemed like it did, but obviously in the race, the race pace just wasn't there. Here at Azerbaijan, I expect, I haven't seen any photos uh, really of them in terms of different configurations, but I expect them to do the same as Renault, as Haas, maybe, maybe trim off some of the flaps, but let's see if Force India can actually finally match some qualifying pace if they have indeed any qualifying pace like they had at China here at Baku. But that's going to be the brief tech roundup here. No major things, but I'm really excited now for next time, the Spanish Grand Prix. That is going to hopefully be, hopefully, fingers crossed, guys, a very juicy episode of tech roundup because that will be the McLaren B car. And I hope to God that all the teams are bringing all their special bits. Obviously, it's the first real time, usually every single season, teams bring their big updates. So I'm looking forward to that one. But if you guys did enjoy this one and found it somewhat informative, then hit that like button. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. Also, let me know who your money's on. Obviously, I know we did predictions on the podcast, but now it's been a couple of days. You might have seen some stuff on the news, maybe. You've maybe seen an article that swayed your opinion. I don't know. Who, who's your money on, maybe? Looking in towards this Grand Prix, let me know in the comments below. If you're around here, do get subscribed for weekly fall on content. We will have the podcast. Obviously, remember as well, got the top five moments coming later on on Sunday, straight after the Grand Prix, and also our very first look in at the F1 Fantasy post, uh, post race. Obviously, Obviously, Azerbaijan being the first race we're doing on the F1 Fantasy game. So look out for that on Sunday evening as well. But till then, guys, hope you enjoy the rest of your day. And I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.